Parental discretion is advised. What's up, guys? This week, the ladies dominate the news. Davari choked someone, maybe. Marie in the bank, and Jack Swagger of Marth. All that and more on this week's Wrestling Mayhem Show. Stick around. Hey guys, welcome once again to the Wrestling Mayhem Show, number 340. We're glad you joined us. I'm Sorgatron. I'm usually here. I'm glad you are too. With us as usual is on the couch is uh, Chachi of InsertCoinToBegin.com. Where are you going? Welcome to the motherfucking Mayhem Show! <laughs> thanks, for, <laughs> thanks for that. Thanks for that. Hey, you started off way too calm, <laughs> and this is not a calm show. Also joining, Lunchbox. also joining us though is DJ Lunchbox. Jesus Christ, is DJ Lunchbox. I'm DJ Lunchbox, and I'm here on the <laughs> fucking Wrestling Mayhem Show. Why right, I'm back, God damn it. And also joining us from San Antonio, Texas, is the oops, Russell no, fan. No. <laughs> Don't no, no, no. Go go yeah, do it again. <laughs> also joining us from San Antonio, Texas, is the Russell fan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, the Russell fan. As we found out this past Thursday, I am majoring in pro wrestling with a minor in arm drags, and it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for the Wrestling Mayhem I show. I would like you better if you minored in hip toss. Mm-hmm. Hip toss? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll learn some hip toss. It's, it's, you know, I, I would it like could be a double can, major. It come to the territory with the arm drag, but... No, all, a- all hip toss or get the fuck out. I'm planning. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm planning on an introductory to hip toss uh, <laughs> course next semester. So yeah, and also with us from Greater Pittsburgh, as you saw briefly there, the Riz. I am not the Wrestle fan, Sorg. Not the Wrestle fan. But I am also in school, and what <laughs> most of you don't know is I'm actually doing my majors in leg drops. Okay, then. All right, then. Uh, this, Rubble of course, stomach. is your Wrestling Mayhem show. You can find out more about us over at... I got tough to hair going on. Let me fix that. There you go. That's less, <laughs> less funky. Okay. Um, WrestlingMayhemShow.com is where you can find out all of our old episodes, articles, and everything like that. We're also on iTunes, Blip TV, Stitcher, on the Roku app via Blip TV uh, uh, application on there, and uh, YouTube as well. So go check us out anywhere else. Also on, ah, uh, what's the other one? It's the one that was added there. Uh, ah, I have it in the thing. Streaker. Spreaker. Spreaker. Spreaker.com. Spreaker. Spreaker.com. We're, we're, we're out of nowhere. I find out we have nearly 300 fans on there Woo! listening to the show weekly. Yeah, the holy crap. Hi, 300 fans. Thank you, at John Fun, for uh, for hooking us up over there and, and keeping us updated on the stats uh, to let, let us know what what's going on there. I guess we're getting a new fan base out of, out of that. So thank you very much for uh, hooking us up with that there. Um, you can also uh, uh, contact us. We're, of course, we're on Twitter, at Mayhem Show. We're on Facebook. We have a fantastic open group where we have a lot of discussion going on uh, on Facebook. And uh, we also are on Google+. And uh, some of us are on Tout. Uh, but you can also email us a good old-fashioned way at... Good times! Uh, good times at wrestling. Good times! Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or drop us a line at 412-206-WMS0. That's 9670 for those letters at the end there. Also, please buy the app just like the Riz has right there. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show Gold app. It's on your Apple device in the App Store. It's also on Android via the Amazon App Store. So please check that out. It's $1.99. It gives you access to all the shows uh, in audio form as well. All the contact information I just talked about in quick access form. And you get bonus content uh, each and every week. Each uh, and every week. Yes, you do. So go please check that out and support the show. Did you know we have a spread shorts, sp- Spreadshirt store? I did. Spread short store. Spread spread short. Short. I think we should store. put some shorts on there probably. But it's... go check it out. If you want your Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt, like uh, I, we probably don't wear them on the show enough. Uh, but go check it out there and support us there. We don't really get much off those shirts. I just like seeing people walk around with our logo. Yeah. 
Yes. Be our billboard. We'll go link that over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So let's get right into it. The only way we know how. We don't know how to change this. All we know how to do is start with the fan mail. I don't know how. What? Who's up first? I want to read the Mexican. Go for it there, Chach. In horrible American Americanishness. <laughs> Hola, amigos. All right. It's me. Es me, es el gran azul. That's what it says. Oh, it does. It does. It does say Emphasis that. on it. That's pre- that was pretty good, Chachi. Me es campeones de parajas. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. Not even close. <laughs> hey, I didn't say I was going to read it correctly. <laughs> this is like anybody reading an old Juggalo Jamie mail. Raw is okay. Needed more Rey Mysterio and Sin Cara. Maybe even Alberto Del Rio. He's kind of a big deal, you know? Ole! Ole! El Gran Azul. Follow me on Twitter. Ole! At Ole! E- Ole! At E-G-A Ole! 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. It's nice that we're getting some international people going on there. I <laughs> Someone think. has their I was going to apologize for screwing up the Spanish in that. But, uh, no, I'm not going to. Did anybody do a Google Translate on this one? <laughs> no, I didn't. Hold on, let me see if we can... Uh, oh, I know. It I actually know. doesn't Hold give on. me the option. You got that there, WrestleFan? Hello, hello, friends. It's me, it's me. It's El Gran Azul. I am the tag team champions, and then the rest is in English. And then Olay <laughs> is just Olay. <laughs> Olay is... is, is Olay is okay. de parejas. That's what I said! No, he did say that. Camp- <laughs> no, I don't, I don't even know what you said, but... That's what he did I kind said. of say that. Play back the tape. Yeah, I'll oh, screw you. <laughs> and I'll try again let's next go, week. Mr. DJ Lunchbox. You have a very special email lined up as usual. Here. <laughs> hey, what's going on, Mayhem Crew? It's me. It's me. It's on, Big PPC Phil. CM Punk. With any of the legends, now that fully rose, and hopefully it will continue with others. We will see who they have him in the ring with leading up to what seems like another Cena match or possible Ryback encounter. Feed more. This is interesting. Feel free to check it out. There's a link. The whole beginning segment was great this week. It is very cool now without seeing the Punk and Tag Team Champs get time on Raw. I enjoy Ziggler leaving Punk later in his match like Punk did to Ziggler a couple of weeks ago. Mexicans win! Mexicans win! Once again, Team Mast Marvel's Ray and Cara win against the evil Puerto Ricans. I see primetime players or Team Rhodes Scala's winning tournament. Uh, Mexicans won't win it all! Russian laughter. <laughs> Rhodes Clay versus Antonio Saro. How impressive was the United States champion? I wish the match was a little longer, but much better than any of the Cobra bullshit ass matches with the loser Santa Marella. Milan monstrosity, more like instead of Mimon Miracle. Fucking pathetic match like Ryan Prack performance on Raw. His match with Tensia was great on SmackDown. Maybe he needed to be fed more before the match for more oomph to get the big man up. AJ's segments were pretty stupid. The coach to help her BGM was stupid and pointless. I enjoy AJ was not for, was not sure if someone on probation should be special guest ref and such whatever. Miss Beat Rider, what want he point of this match besides reminding us that woo woo woo, you know Rido is going to lose. He is the most over jobber since Brooklyn Brawler and Barry Horowitz. Horowitz only Ryder has merch. Woo woo woo, the miss is awesome. <laughs> the big show Seamus debate was not too great, but I must say I laughed out loud when Seamus wore a mask on top and pretended to ask questions. Booker T as the master of ceremonies was interesting. You got to love it. Booker voice. 
It was a little weird that everyone was wearing pants besides Seamus. Pants on, I just saying. <coughs> okay, sorry. So going back to no pants talk, Punk is the man, but the whole wearing the jacket over the shirt and now it looks like Punk is not wearing anything. Once again, pants are nice, just saying. Plus it seems as Raw got longer, he unzipped his jacket more and then as Raw went on, so did his jacket next time he is out. He revealed his shirt and or he took it off and was a little thing I noticed. Pants, that is all. <laughs> what the hell? One man band, Encore Team was cool. They actually doing something with this maybe. Santino is terrible still. Sandow versus Seamus was five star classic. Yeah. Made them both better, period. Yeah. Yes. Kingston versus Del Rip was good, but what is the point? Coffee is in tag tournament. Whatever. Main event was good. Glad to see tag champs on main event spots most of the time. Hooray, Team Hell No is a dumb name. Who do you think will confront CM? Punk Mayhem Crew. <laughs> <laughs> I would like Austin and JBL. Who would you like to win tag team tournament? P.S. Great Smackdown this week. Till next week, it's me. It's me. It's at Big PPC. All right. Like I like we kind of said during that. Yeah. Uh, we were like sitting there. We're like, wow, Sandow's Chamus is going. And it's I was great. Really shocked. It was oh, it amazing. Was, yeah, it was a it was a phenomenal match. And I mean, that's I think that's the best we've seen out of those two. Like wrestling wise, it's it, it was it was really great. Um, and, and not to say like Damien Sandow does bad matches, but that was probably like the best match he's had since like his start in the WWE. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So, uh, let's get, to, let's get into these questions here. He's got for us. What do you think he's going to confront CM Punk? I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be right back confrontations for like the rest of the month. Well, I, I, I think mean, he means like legends. Oh, legend they're, wise? they're doing a trend of do, like just having legends come out. And okay. Confront Punk. Okay. Um, so he's like he's like the new like legend killer or whatever you know he, he's uh, that's basically what they're I doing guess. with him right I mean it's like really you know it's like oh here's somebody else for him to mm-hmm. say he's better than and you know and, and, and the way he knows how and that's cool you know I I kind of like that it just kind of dawned on me that's what they were doing there that in that fashion you know I mean it's not like they're bringing trucking out like Ser- Sergeant Slaughter and Pat Patterson or anything like that it was like yet I mean I guess they are yet. kind of the legends of our generation so. You know, yeah, yet, uh, yeah, you never know. So, um, all right, all right. Any other thoughts there? All right, who did we say? Well, well, did anybody actually say anything? Yep. <laughs> no. Uh, I I actually think Stone Cold will be a pretty good one because off this tweet from someone who tweeted CM Punk, this question was. What would have happened if Stone Cold Steve Austin made his way down the ramp last night? CM Punk's response. He probably would have fallen down. Oh. Dun, dun. Oh. <laughs> uh, Wrestling okay. Revolution Zero there. He says uh, he, he's getting Bob Backlund about the 500 plus reigns he has. Austin or JBL or HPK or Edge says Big PPC. Uh, and Cars says uh, the Godly Gooker. PPC. <laughs> I really don't care who it is, as long as CM Punk keeps up the tweeting. Keeps up, he keeps up the yeah. awesome. Yes, uh, I think it was Sunday. He sent out back to back tweets. Mm-hmm. He's like, "Lost the championship belt, please retweet." Oh, and yeah. then his very next tweet was, "Oh, I found the belt. It was under a pile of money." I love it. I love it. I was That's like, great. "Yes, it was amazing." I wanted to hug him. <laughs> oh, I love this tweet the other day where he's like, I don't follow protocol or something like that. Because Riz's response was the best, and it was, um, protocol will be very sad to no, hear that. It was, I don't follow policy. Policy, that's And then I said, well, at policy will be quite sad that you don't follow <laughs> him. <laughs> uh, I get it. Uh, like Twitter. Shut up, Russell fan. Wow. <laughs> no. 
No, no. Okay, okay, okay. What, what else we got from? I think I closed it by accident. No, there it is. Um, also, who would you like to win? See, win the tag team tournament. I don't know. Who would you like to see take on Brian and uh, Kane? I'm torn. You're torn. It's, for me, it's either it's definitely either primetime players who I'm always a big fan of. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Anything they do, uh, but Road Scholar. Oh my God. Like, who is Hornswoggle teaming awesome. with? Who's Hornswoggle teaming yeah. with? I think he's really under the uh, under the Sincar match. <laughs> Right, yeah. right, because that's who right. I pick. Yeah, yes. All right. It's gonna be Sin Cara, or no? It's gonna be Hornswoggle under that mask. <laughs> I don't know. We just I say agree. it's just gonna be Sin Cara that's gonna win. Yeah, Sin, Sin Cara is just gonna botch everything, injure all of his partners, and then still wind up winning. <laughs> he's the tag team champ. Well, now that he's both Ms. Rey Mysterio and Sakara now. So. <laughs> oh, I really, I really, I really don't want to support that tag team. But that shit they did with the masks was really cool. Like where they split the masks, that was actually pretty cool. Yes. Well, the thing is, thank we- you. Bo Diggity said that uh, the primetime players need to watch the matches from ca- from a couch. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Uh, I think they're good for what they do. They're, they're no, fine. they're no. I mean, I would like to see not the Usos. Usos really haven't been doing anything interesting. And well, like, no, even like well, Primo and won't. Epico, like become like a threat. You know, uh, I I feel I'm really worried about the real tag teams kind of being overshadowed by you know kind of more thrown together ones like Road Scholars, like the other ones like like Kane Kane Daniels. But at least tag teaming is a thing now. Well, yeah. So, I mean, it's 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 at least. Showing that they, you know, at least are putting some time into it and some effort into like making these tag teams at least matter, you yeah, know. Yeah. And it's not just two random guys. I think the we, the one the only one is like Santino and Zack Ryder is the real like thrown together one. Mm-hmm. Other than that, like everyone sort of makes sense in a way. Um, but go, but yeah, going back to the Sin Cara uh, double mask sort of thing, it was just odd. It was cool, but odd from the fact. When they filmed him from the Rey Mysterio side, he looked like 1996 WCW Rey Mysterio. He did, yeah. I was like, wait, which one was that? Oh, Mysterio's <laughs> got the shirt. Okay. <laughs> he's got the oh, he's oh. Got the, yeah. He's got, he's he's got, got the, the gut. Shirt. Oh. No, I'm oh. sorry. He's getting fat. He so, does. Yeah, that's he really why he's is. Go back and watch shirt. that. Any of the ECW DVDs on Netflix. Yeah, yeah. Tiny little yeah. Mysterio. Oh, man. AJ, Ebo oh, yeah, is getting fired up. He said, fuck it, all caps, kids. He is going all caps. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you, Big P- PC, for that. Always starting good conversations as I, usual. I, I think you were about to say Big PCP. PCP. <laughs> Big PC. Um, all right. I think that is all for the emails, if I'm not mistaken. Diggity. What? Uh, there's a big. Uh, there's a Bo Diggity. Yeah. Oh, there's- shit. Bo Diggity. And a lot of it's in caps lock, and too. It's also in caps locks. You want me to do this one, guys? Sure. All sure. right. Do it right. Wait, wait, I gotta find it. There it is. Uh, oh, it's doing the thing. <gasps> Woo! It's Bo fucking Diggity. Here to present you with a fun fact. John Cena has won a fuckload of titles in his career. That's not the fun fact. The fun fact <laughs> is that John Cena has won 12 world championships, which puts him one behind Triple H. Always wanted to say it like William Regal, just for fun. Yo, manga. R.I.P. You mega. Did the announcer stop blowing Triple H for having 13 championships that Cena tops him? Also, does this put Cena in the top 20 wrestlers ever category? All this is an irrelevant. All this is irrelevant because Ric Flair is a 16-time champion and don't you fucking forget it! Woo! Bo fucking dig it. That, that's what North Carolina will do to you. All right. Yep. All right. <laughs> um, I, was I gotta to, say, uh, first uh, of all, that was a brilliant Bo Diggity impression. I did I get the the pauses in the right places? Yeah, yeah. It's like calm, rhythm. but not. It comes in, and then it, it comes just in, snowballs comes, into like, like yeah, yelling. Exactly. <laughs> He's a controlled frenzy. A controlled uh, frenzy. Exactly. Silent rage. I think he was a in the top twenty wrestlers of all time, regardless of mm. the amount of belts he had won. Yeah, belt, belts don't. I uh, yet. I don't think play as much into it anymore. You know, it's a lot more about like, you know, th- your status, like how much a, a fan would pay. You know, you know what? I, not pay, but like how much you know, popular popular they are. I guess is the best way to put it. I don't think. I don't think that's the really the argument here. I mean, I think. This, I mean, 
the amount of world championships is still a feat. You know what I mean? Um, it's still, you know, I, I don't think we're talking about so much fandom. You know, I've won six of them. You what? Yeah, I, I've won six of them. You won six I of mean, them. I, I miss those yeah. pay per views. Yeah. So I mean, they're just giving it away nowadays. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So they, 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 you just you just picked up two at Toys R Us the other day. I know. So you know. So um, I don't know. Any, anything else? Any other thoughts on that, guys? No. No. Okay. Woo! All that's right. Nice. That's a good point on that. And we also got a voicemail, guys. Uh, yes, just, from a Matt Carlin. Did you give me times? I did. You give me times. Overall, listen. It is very loud. Where? What? It's not that loud. It's going to be quite yelling. Is it? No, uh, there's a little yelling. I didn't listen yeah. to this one yet, so I wasn't sure. It, it's it's a good it's a good listen. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, hmm, 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 hmm. All right, already in progress. Um, and I just want to touch on a few topics. First, um, okay. I do have a, a belated question for the debate from last night on Raw, and I wanted to ask Seamus why he's such a big, fat, freaking Irish jerk. Um. <laughs> That was uh, a <laughs> tangent. Um, I like how he went with me he went PG on that. Yeah. First thing, three-hour Raws well, he works in at the level with you. I think these have been set up to punish parents, specifically parents of my age who like to watch wrestling but don't like to like have kids watching wrestling. I mean, I don't know how many of you guys have kids. Um, None. And no, well, the wrestling fan does not count. Well, AJ. And no, I don't know I, how many of you guys have kids, he's, but... You really only have to let your kids watch it for like two minutes or so before they're trying to jump off the couches and kill themselves. <laughs> and, uh, AJ. So AJ. AJ. That's AJ. So I'm just DVRing the Raw, which worked great when it was starting at 9. Yeah. Because get the kids to bed around go. 9 o'clock. Yeah. And then you just hop on the DVR. You're caught up by like 9.30, quarter to 10. Cool. And you're, and, you're, and you're live with your Twitter, bringing it home. But now it starts at 8. Now I got an hour and a damn half to work through every Monday night just to catch up. Most nights, I don't even catch up. It never happens. It's crap. The three-hour run has been put on this earth to punish parents in their mid-30s who like to watch wrestling. The WWE is trying to force themselves upon my kids. They're trying to get me to turn on wrestling Whoa. while they're still awake, and I'm not going to do it. I'm a good parent. They can find it on, they can find it on their own if they want to. That's it. Um... <laughs> One more point. One more point. Okay. One more point. I kind of want to roll with this point. fan. This is the deal. Okay. Now, the wife, my wife, does not watch Raw all the way through. The last. She subject herself to that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the last few weeks, she wakes up on the Tuesday. She turns to me and she goes, So, Matt, what happened on wrestling last night? And you know what I answer? I don't know. I don't know. No. Um, um, nothing. Um, nothing happened. Nothing is freaking happening on these shows. <laughs> you get it? You got it? There's nothing happening. There's nothing happening. <laughs> That's all. Wow. I don't have anymore. My brain is too frazzled. I've got two kids yelling at me upstairs. But have a great show. Hopefully I run into you guys in the chat room today. All right, Matt Carlin's Thanks a lot. Like wow, to, uh, he's a little frazzled there. I would like to set the record straight that, uh... Uh, between Lunchbox and I, we have like forty-eight children. <laughs> <laughs> so that's true, but uh, most of mine are uh, like some of them are half penguins, some of them are like <laughs> genetically engineered squirrels, things like that. Right. Wait, you, I'm a you, scientist, <laughs> and squirrels can't enjoy wrestling. Wait, did you no, just say half of them are wrestling. half penguin? What? But, but you said half. They're half penguin. Can I hear it? Not so together. <laughs> Not okay. together between the, the two of us. Penguin is oh. Penguin to survive in warm weather. Uh, Matt said you shouldn't have cut the end off. I want a wrestle fan. I wanted me to cut it well, off. Like well, a he, also notes, he also knows the fact that he's the first ever Grand Slam Mayhem Show contributor. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Recognized. Recognize. Yeah. All right, there was something in the uh, uh, Facebook that I think vi- this is a visual. This is a visual, guys. So on, on the audio, you're gonna have to check this out. Uh, but uh, there's some uh, fantastic tattoo work that was done. I think oh, we, yes. just, we just need to share this. All right, there you go. There you go. 
World yeah. champion. World champion. Dedication. Those world champion. For those of you listening at home, it's it's a guy lifting his uh, lifting his shirt up, and he has a full uh, around the waist tattoo of the uh, the WWF Championship winged belt. Fan. Yep. Fucking tastic. Yeah. So. Um, that is too much. Wow. And I That's, also want to make mention before we get into much. the indie minutes. Um, uh, uh, this this came up. Uh, we, we, what well, this came up in discussion the other night, I believe, in the hangout. Um, Jack Swagger of Mars. Uh, that's sure. uh, Jack Swagger of Mars. Tumblr. Uh, the continuing the adventures of the All American American Martian. Uh, so uh, if you go here, there's two chapters of Jack Swagger from Mars. There's also a chapter thirty. Strangely enough, uh, Russell fan, I think you know a little bit more about this than I do. Well, yes, because well, the, the 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 Jack Swagger of Mars sort of. Uh, idea or concept came from uh, a good friend of mine, a guy that I mention a lot in the Mayhem show, uh, you know, mainly because a lot of people think that I am him, uh, which I'm not. Uh, it's uh, Brandon Stroud, uh, at Mr. Brandon Stroud on Twitter. He uh, included it in his best and worst of Raw column that he does every week on withleather.uprocks.com. Uh, and it basically started when Jack Swagger uh, first left Raw and was doing his, oh, I need some time off. And his theory was that Jack Swagger was going to travel to Mars. Um, so he started writing chapters uh, for his uh, novel, I guess, um, Jack Swagger of Mars. Uh, I encourage you to check that out. Re- uh, like uh, it says, uh, Jack Swagger of Mars. Tumblr.com, and also the best and worst of Raw column on withleather.uprocks.com because uh, it is entertaining. It very much is. And uh, I believe, stay tuned uh, for later on. As we may have a dramatic reading of uh, one of the chapters from Jack Swagger of Mars, done by our very own DJ Lunchbox. That's right. That's right. Uh, they'll be tacked on to the end of this show. Uh, we may. I think I'm probably going to toss it on uh, YouTube as well or something. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I, we we just like it so much. Uh, we just wanted to, to do something and bring it to you guys. And and uh, I hope you guys like it and go check it out again. That's uh, uh, Jack Swagger of Mars. So let's hit. Down, let's head over to Amateur Falling Down time. They're a wrestle fan. Amateur Falling Down this week in indie wrestling. That's right. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about this week is um, our good friends at IWC had their big event, uh, Mountain State Madness, this past weekend. And the Sorgatron Media crew was in attendance, Sorg and I believe also Chachi. Um, so yeah, I believe obviously they're going to have a little bit more to say about this than uh, I do. Sorry, I'm okay. muted. Whoa, uh, thanks for putting me. No. Thanks for putting me on the spot. He was, what, he was you were there. Uh, yeah, it was. It was. A, it was a good event. Um, I was a little upset uh, due to some things that we didn't get many details on. Um, well, Sammy Callahan. Uh, what Calhoun? Callahan. Callahan. Callahan whatever. <laughs> uh, he wasn't there. He uh, got called up for the weekend at a tryout. Um, so he wasn't able to defend the Super Indie title against Ricky Shane Page, which is the match I was looking forward to the most. Oh, yeah, that, that, that sounded like it was going to be a good match. Um, so uh, we didn't get to see that match. Uh, although they are they are uh, uh, making it good on it by making a three-way at the uh, next show, New Excuses, uh, between Callahan, Swan, and Facade. Ooh. So um, hmm. already kind of shaping up big for that. Uh, so uh, th- that's already over at IWCWrestling.com. They already have like eight I patches lined up. I don't understand up. how that makes up for the the match. Uh, I think that works out. Um, I don't see how but that works still, out. But still, but still. But good for him. We're getting a uh, shot at uh, you know, whatever's going on there with uh, you know, potentially with WWE. So uh, best of luck with him on that. Um, also, uh, yeah, of course, Shima, or Zima Ion, Shima Zion, uh, returned, uh, against Sanjay Dutt. Pretty good match, went out in the crowd. That surprised us. Um, it was a pretty good <laughs> show, all, all, all up and down, uh, 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 for the most part, they actually did really good. I guess they set up for 200 people. They actually, uh, set up three, had to set up 300 seats, uh, because of the people that showed up basically Very cool so uh doing really good in new all uh, it was really good to see that I, and i always love seeing like a different crowd and their reactions to everything like that you know i feel like the court time 
people here in, in Elizabeth and greater Pittsburgh. Like they're like the longtime fans and everything. And they react differently to like when we go to these new towns and, and see that. Um, so yeah, everything was cool. I, uh, we had a great time there. I know a lot of people stopped by the Sorgatron media booth, um, and talked with Missy over there. So, uh, really good time. I always like going to Newville. Newell and uh, and I like going to Clearfield too. It's just like like you know, Newell's a little bit closer. So and giant teapot, <laughs> giant, giant teapot over there in Chester. So uh, so go check that. The DVD will be up uh, again. It was Sunday and uh, they're, we're doing some post voice work on it. So uh, it'll be up in the next couple of days over at iwcwrestling.com and sorgatronmedia.com uh, for purchase with all this, all the teasers and all the uh, uh, option of download it off online and all that stuff. So go check that out, of course. Um, and uh, with that, uh, and like I said, in, in, uh, their next show is uh, uh, the 20th, uh, IWCWrestling.com, uh, uh, right here in Elizabeth, PA. Uh, no excuses, 2012. So, And with that, what else you got there, Russell fam? Uh, next here on uh, in the, the Indie Minute this week is I want to talk about uh, the upcoming events that are going to be occurring this weekend for Chikara Pro Wrestling. Uh, they have uh, two events coming up. The first one, October 6th in Piedmont, Alabama for Deep Freeze. Um, and uh, there are the night after uh, for Zodiac Crimes, October 7th in Gibsonville, North Carolina. Um, if you want more information on that, you want to get tickets to that event, you can go to ChikarPro.com. Uh, the cards look really good, uh, and it's going to be their first time in the uh, Alabama, North Carolina area. Um, so I definitely check them out. Chikara is actually, uh, ever since moving from the uh, uh, ECW arena as one of like their mainstays of you know places they uh, do shows at, they've expanded to a lot of different places, and I, I really I really love that they do that, and they get. A bunch of different crowds and you know a wide variety of you know and really good size crowds as well even though they're in like new areas um so yeah i definitely uh would encourage people to go check out those events uh at chikara uh for chikara pro go to chikarapro.com for ticket information and more on that i, I uh, really feel i really do feel like chikara is becoming like what roh was like in oh, size yeah. uh because they're really touring uh, uh, across really the greater northeast now in the Midwest, now into the, uh, what was it, like the Mid-South, I guess. Um, I, I mean, I think that's really, that, that's great to see that they're expanding and they're a true alternative. And, and I mean, I, I really think they're, and, and looking at the video that I brought up there, like their production quality keeps getting better and better. They have a really cool, different visual style with everything that they do. They always have. And it just keeps re- getting refined year after year after year into just a really great product. Um, so, it, yeah, yeah. It, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> it's Mr. Uh, Touchdown. I don't know what happened Mr. there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you, you kind of you kind of wonder if these guys might be the next to get picked up to do in like a, a, a show nationally, uh, you know, by some channel. You know, they, they seem to be really poised with it. You know, I could I could see them sort of becoming the top, honestly, of the independents. They really have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I also highly encourage anyone to check out King of Trios 2012 that was just recently released. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I mentioned before, how they uh, no longer are in the ECW arena, and people were worried since they had to do it in Easton, Pennsylvania. But the crowd was freaking like the huge crowd for that event. Um, and all three nights are just amazing professional wrestling. And, y- you know, you have the characters that Chikar is known for, sort of the ridiculousness and the uh, comedy-based stuff, but phenomenal wrestling, too. Like, it's it's literally some of the best wrestling I've seen. Uh, and I highly encourage people to check them out. And uh, if you don't, if you if you have those misconceptions about Chikar that you think it's all comedy, you will be definitely amazed. I will, I will say that much. Johnny Gargano uh, kicked someone in the face. Johnny Gargano kicked a uh, Japanese female wrestler in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what was the video? It was like uh, Johnny Guerrero gets to uh, Johnny Guerrero. Johnny Guerrero. Johnny Guerrero. Johnny Gargano, Johnny Gargano like lives okay, in a dream okay, okay, or something okay. like that. Yeah, I guess it's his dream to kick uh, female Joshi wrestlers hold in the on, face. Hold on, hold on. Let me see if I can bring up the video there. Uh, is it on? No, I bet if he ever gets picked up by the WWE, they'll name him Johnny Guerrero. <laughs> Probably. Oh, sure. Why not? You know. Uh, they already lost one Guerrero. I mean, why, uh, why? dream came true for Johnny Gargano, and there he is. There, yeah, uh, if you he wants the audio, the audio is what. Uh, yeah, yeah, the audio a little bit. The audio is not real good. And pow! <laughs> like you can hear the smack. So- I love the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the pose he does. He's just like. 
<laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I did that. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic! So uh, you got, there's there you go. There there's one reason to check out King of Trios. Oh yeah. Definitely. All right. All right. What else we got there, sir? <laughs> the next thing I do want to talk about is um, uh, a very interesting an- another series of events coming up soon. Um, a double shot event for Beyond Wrestling and Women Superstars Uncensored. Um, w- uh, we talked a couple months ago how Beyond Wrestling was the one that bought Women Superstars Uncensored and is now uh, taking reign of the company. And uh, they will be holding a double shot on uh, October 13th in Deer Park, New York. Uh, at that event, uh, at 1.30 will be the Beyond Wrestling Show, and at 6.30 will be the uh, WSU Show. Uh, in between that, there will be uh, three Beyond Wrestling versus WSU intergender matches uh, that look really phenomenal. Uh, you can get you can buy your tickets for either event, or you can get a combo deal for both events that also includes the three matches uh, in between. Uh, that's in Deer Park, New York, uh, October 13th. If you want to get more information and get tickets for that event, those events, uh, you can go to lookmonofans.com, which is the Beyond Wrestling site. Um, and hopefully, though, this is hopefully it'll be really good. This is the first uh, WSU show under the new management, uh, and they've improved a lot on their production. I can see as far as like doing videos online and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh, so I mm-hmm. hope it can definitely translate into a you know yeah, a can- really. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, finish. Finish. Oh, that it can translate to like a really, really well produced, you know, event. Yeah, because remember, I mean, these are the guys that they were like in some kind of storage uh, unit or something with a ring and some wrestlers around, and they were shooting the thing, and it was well, like four do, wrestlers. They also, it, they also do now shows more shows where fans can attend. exactly. Well, they were doing. I know they were doing spot matches at like uh, like AIW and some other groups like that. So I, it's really cool to see them kind of grow up through that, and and I say that with the connection with WSU, which is probably one of the bigger. I want to say, let's say top three. Of the women's uh, only feds, maybe I, I would say fan. at least like top two. As far as far as they're they're female specific. Yeah, they're yeah, exactly, old, exactly. I mean, I, there's, I really think it's them and Shimmer at this point. Uh, from from what I what I've seen so far, those are, those are the two wrestlers. I mean, no, wrestlers. There's only if, one. If they exist. <laughs> yeah, I don't even that know if they're still around. That is questionable. Um, but uh, yeah, and I, and I know the one here. I think this is, if I'm not mistaken, this is uh, yeah, it's Marty Bell, uh, which I, I know I saw at um, at uh, Mountain State I Madness last see. time we were we were there a few months ago. Yeah, current and, current WSC Spirit Champion. I I, I I I think I remember good things from that match. So uh, so yeah yeah good. But yeah, WSC is definitely moving up as the top. As, uh, they're uh, having a lot of sort of contention with Shimmer as being as being exclusively female. There are a lot of groups that do a lot of great female wrestling in general, um, but they are you know really coming up as the top exclusive female promotion, as, uh, including Shine Wrestling, which is uh, also doing a lot of great stuff. Um, so yeah, I want I, I'm encouraged to see how the Beyond Wrestling uh, injection of WSU is going to change it at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. As far as production wise goes, because I will say one of the problems I do have with WSU's past shows is their production wasn't always that great. Uh, like if you look at some of the videos, lighting and like sort of the camera work is phenomenal. Um, but I'm hoping to see that possibly change um, with this new uh, this new regime, I guess. So uh, definitely, if you want to check that out, like I said, go to lookmonofans.com to get the tickets for that event in Deer Park, New York. Uh, I think uh, we wanted to shout out here. John Fun uh, was mentioning UWA Wrestling in Hamlin, West Virginia. If you're in your <coughs> go, area, go check that out or look them out um, up online. I imagine they'll have something there. Uh, it says uh, uh, a little organization that draws very little uh, yet, but fun place because of the guys. So if, there you go. There you go. There's there's one from John Fun. All right, with that, that is your. Excuse me, Indie Minute. Thank you a lot, Russell fan, for that. So let's go see what's going on on Gold this week. Let's hope I update it this time. And uh, what else What else is going on? And we'll be back with you, remember one. And yeah. then that rolls around into, oh, friend of the show is facing friend of the show. And then the friend of the show beat the friend of the show. And I made someone drunk just now. I'm already really mad for other reasons, so... Uh, I, just, I just didn't know if you, uh, you, you, you couldn't say anything about it, or, you know... He's mad at me. I don't give a fuck about saying something about it. I gotta say where the fuck I want about it. I think it's bullshit. He's mad at me. Can, 
you know, whatever you can hold up Morgan for those Freeman entire voice. few par- paragraphs. So. I'll, I'll read it the same way every now and then the people in my office will ask me to do dramatic readings of spam, so I'll do it like that. Cause I don't ride in a huge ass truck I pop a wheelie on a street bike Yeah, this fucking dude is nuts And who we trust the dude who bust and move it up I've used the stuff to cruise and rush Booze and blunts fucked up What do you want? This my life and this my right To take advantage of the drugs I'm given To escape into a greater state of living I'm just racing to the finish Going nowhere fast All it takes is just to What's up, dogs? DJ Lunchbox here to take you on our customary Journey of the mind a little segment we like to call, remember when? Ladders have had a very interesting history uh, in the WWE. Um, tables, ladders, chairs matches, very good. Ladders matches, you know, Bret Hart had famous one, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, all that business. Good stuff. But, um, uh, never has have we seen such innovation when it, with ladders when it comes to the money in the bank ladder match. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm not mistaken, which I may be, I think it was Carlito that pioneered the whole thing. Uh, mm-hmm. He was like, "What mm-hmm. the money in the bank?" And I uh, it was Chris bro. Jericho. Mm-hmm. Who was it? It was Kane. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It doesn't, Chris it doesn't matter. It, doesn't <laughs> matter. it was, it was the Jericho, point, by the way. The point is, um, I'd like to take you back to uh, when Money in the Bank, once a year, one match a year, uh, WrestleMania, absolutely fantastic. It made people each and every single year. Uh, Shelton Benjamin, it got to the point where that's the only time he did anything (coughs) interesting, um, was the Money in the Bank match. But uh, in honor of Jack Swagger of Mars, I do want to have honorable mention to the time that uh, Jack Swagger... Um, won Money in the Bank match, and uh, he was up there fucking with things so awkwardly. It was a good, like, 30, 40 seconds, and everyone was really uncomfortable, mainly because you could see a perfect outline of his of his peen in his, uh, in his terrible trunks. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's my... Uh, <laughs> uh, guys? Uh, I love that that just Adam happened to be the, the one that I found. Mm-hmm. With Swagger. Um, I, I want to throw back. Okay, this is kind of a... I, I remember this explicitly because you guys mentioned Carlito. The reason I think Carlito popped in you guys' heads because I think the second time uh, they did the ladder match, he was the one said, hey, guys, let's bring back the Money in the Bank ladder match. And he wasn't in the match. And then he ended up not getting in the match because they had, like, mm-hmm. you know, qualifying matches. So <laughs> so I think that popped in there. I have to research this now because it's going to bother me. Yeah, yeah. But no, I think you're right. I think it is Jericho that did originally come up with it. Um, so uh, other than that, I, oh, moments. There's, the, the, I can't think of anything that really draws out, you know. I got one. All right, go ahead. I take you back to the second ever Money in the Bank ladder match. Where we had some cool people in there. We had Sean Benjamin. We had like Matt Hardy, I think. Like Rob Van Dam, you know, people that are accustomed to Money in the Bank ladder matches. We also had two people in there that were a little not as experienced with ladder matches. One being Finley, which that was awesome. And yeah, two rock that match. And two Rick Flair. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah so that, I think which, I So go ahead. Which which Rick Flair, yes, in the ladder match is very odd. Um oh. But to the point where he gets back body dropped off the top of a ladder, <laughs> takes a back bump, I literally about shit my pants. If I can throw into that, I just recently, like I said, I've been watching the uh, uh, ECW stuff on Netflix, and they showed the match between him and Big Show. And I remember during that mm-hmm. match and then during this match that you're describing, I think the phrase I kept yelling at the screen was, You have nothing left to prove! <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, it, that, but that damn! And also, he, that and also the TLC match he had with Edge that one time where he was <gasps> all bloody and shit, and like, and that was on oh, TV, dude. wasn't it? Oh yeah, I'm like whoa! 
Yeah, yeah. Flair. Wow. I you're mm. good. You're the best, mm. buddy. You don't you don't gotta you don't gotta do no, that. No, he no, is, he is he is a great, you know, and, and it was good and it's a memory. But part of he's just like, please don't die in the ring. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh so uh I don't know. That's why it's so sad TNA now, because none well, of that stuff will be nearly as memorable as all of this stuff that we are bringing up. Well, every time Ric Flair's in the ring, we're saying, please don't die in the ring. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because <laughs> one touch and he's bleeding. Maybe the last 10 years, you know? So, yes, yes. Riz, what do you got? Uh, Money in the Bank, uh, WrestleMania 23. The time that Edge was laying on the ladder. And a certain uh, very messed up crackhead was on the top of the ladder okay and he fell through the ladder breaking probably a lot more than just the ladder but that moment right there solidified the money in the bank match ladder match that anything can happen it took edge and jeff hardy out of that match and also we saw mr kennedy uh do his finisher to Hornswoggle on the <laughs> was it wasn't it on the mini ladder too it was on the mini ladder I think yeah. it was I think it was on oh, the use of the, the mini I, ladder there you go yep but that but, and that and that's the thing that was a really awesome moment but it also spawned WWE's trends of now ladders can break like tables now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and but then it got more obvious to the fact that they were wooden tables or, or yeah, wooden ladders I, I should say tables are wooden Russell fan they are wooden and apparently also the ladders that break because every time they would do it, like you could see, like the, the like the wood chips or whatever, like the like whatever it's called, like coming out of the ladder after they did it. So that started a really horrible trend. But yeah, awesome, awesome. Well, there you go, money in the bank. Uh, which is, yeah, uh, I I do kind of miss when it was the one time a year thing, but I do kind of like that. It really has become the new Royal Rumble. So. Mm-hmm. And, and and it's it, it's the last two years has been the pay per view to look forward to. Like remember we used to look forward to or always do. I think we still you look forward to the Royal, Royal, Royal Rumble. Royal Rumble. Yeah. yeah, we used to look forward to the Survivor Series. Now it's Money in the Bank has at least replaced Survivor Series in that in that aspect. Mm-hmm. So because uh, really Survivor Series matches when they do have them are so forgettable. Oh God, yeah, so forgettable. So all right, with that, let's head over and see what's. In Mike's craw, what's grinding his gears this week? It's been Mike's been in a mayhem. Hey, you go, boys and girls, fans and friends across the land. It's Mad Mike once again with your minute of mayhem. TNA, TNA, fucking TNA. Um, you got two weeks and counting to really turn my opinion around of your product. And if that doesn't happen, the boycott goes into effect, and I'll stop reviewing it. Mayhem Show fans, Mayhem Show crew, if you guys can think of something else you'd like me to review after TNA, um, pay-per-views, SmackDown, Saturday Morning Slam, Young Justice, Arrow, whatever, I'll review anything pretty much. And try and draw some correlation to wrestling. Hell, I could even do wrestling, like, movies that have had wrestlers in it. That might be interesting. Um, but TNA, you're really getting difficult to watch at this point. And I'm watching it drunk, so it's pretty easy to impress me. Um, but as far as Ace of the Nates go, I don't even think you know who's in charge of it anymore. It could be Bully Ray, it could be Abyss, it could be Jeff Jarrett, it could be Brooke Hogan, it could be fucking Garrett Bischoff. I, I don't know. But it's just fucking retarded, and there needs to be some sort of tease as to who's in charge of Ace and Eights. There has to be, because... Oh, and with... I, how do Hogan and Sting get kidnapped when there are supposed to be police patrolling the Impact Zone? I don't get it. But, um, anyway, I skimmed through Raw tonight because I woke up a little bit later. It didn't really see like seem like anything of importance happened. The Raws without John Cena on them are always weird to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's because John Cena is like the poster boy of WWE, but for some reason, Team Hell No 
has uh, kind of usurped that. Which, by the way, I think they chose Team Hell No. I think the Twitter poll was a bit skewed because when they had the night where they picked the name of the team, Barbershop Window had released a Team Friendship shirt. Just food for thought. So, um, other than that, JR didn't get humiliated. Ryback appears to be plan B if John Cena can't wrestle at Hell in the Cell. Big Show and Sheamus don't know. They're not master debaters. We'll put it that way. And, uh, yeah. It's just very odd Raw overall. But I do like the tag team tournament. And it's kind of funny that we have a tag team division now, folks. Like, that's just insane to me that we have a tag team division. And we have a tag team tournament, for fuck's sake. With legitimate teams. Mostly. I mean, you know, you can't really count Santino and Zack Ryder. Or the Cobros, I believe, as I've heard them called. Um, but yeah, we have tag teams. And it's awesome. And some of them are actually pretty good. Road Scholars, I'm looking at you guys. Um, but here we go uh, with the Mad Mike Fact of the Week. I was just curious. Like, I know that we can break down promotion by promotion, decades, years, all that stuff. And I was just looking at... I felt like a, checking a big overall picture. And I wanted to see who had the most matches on record in WrestlingData.com. And the answer probably won't surprise many of you. It's Ric Flair. Ric Flair, in their databases, had 4,458 matches. <laughs> the funny thing is, he's only won 1,996 of them. I don't know, I just found it a little bit interesting that you'd think with someone who had that many matches, they'd probably have a better win percentage. But, go figure. They don't. And the guy who has the second most is Johnny Weaver. I'm not entirely familiar with him, but his... Ric Flair's win differential is plus 270. Johnny Weaver's is plus 1642. So it just kind of goes to show you that even though Ric Flair can be a dick and is too old, you know, he put a lot of guys over. Well, this is Mad Mike for the minute. Peace, bitches. Fuck it, TNA. Fuck yeah, it. TNA. Wow, wow. Okay, when they uh, turned into... This is, this is me By the way, like by the way, you. by the way. Um, uh, wow, that is really... We're going to keep following that situation to find out what happened. When fucking Sting and Hulk Hogan got kidnapped and people are getting hostile tortured somewhere. Mm-hmm. By the way, please check out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles this Saturday on Nickelodeon. <laughs> oh, yeah, gosh. Uh, well, that's the thing. TNA... TNA you went too to far in one direction! <laughs> yes, Ninja Turtles I thought was pretty good. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, Welcome to the but, Ninja Turtle Mayhem Show. But, but... Oh, we'll but well, that, but that's not a problem. The, the problem is that TNA always does these crazy storylines where people get kidnapped or killed or like re- uh, like beaten to death with spikes. Why or, does like, Hulk Hogan think this is a good idea? Beaten to death with spikes. Yep. Yep. That sounds like something ridiculous, but they actually that's, did that. Just wanted to say it, man. But it, they always try to go too over the top. I disagree with Mad Mike saying that they're uh, not giving enough, like, sort of leads as to who it could be. Uh, yeah, they're giving a shit ton of leads. No, no, it's and, like basically everybody could be it at this point. Any one of you. I mean, I mean, I, you got Garrett Bischoff, like, getting burned and, and shooting dirty looks at Hulk Hogan. And, and the camera, why did the camera stay there? The camera stayed there. The camera stayed there. God, it could be Joey Ryan at this point. It could be Bully Ray. I mean, I think uh, Swerve abyss uh parks thing could happen here i mean uh, it could be mike today it could be i I don't even care you know it it could be anybody and it'll be completely underwhelming when it finally is revealed it's gonna be don west by the way by the way uh the the poster for turning point came out which i think is the pay-per-view right after bound for glory and it's featuring aces and eights I uh, kind of an illustration of Aces. <laughs> cool, and they were able to pose for a poster. Oh, good. Uh, you know, when you're finding out if they can be 
granted all access if they win at Bound for Glory. <laughs> Bo, giddy, Bo diggity said he hope it's a chimpanzee with a boner. I hope <laughs> it's Hornswoggle, okay? I, Let's I just make it Hornswoggle and move the fuck on, okay? All right, as we were going to do on this show. Uh, yes, uh, your reason, I think you're uh, uh, f- weird because... Weird? No, you're not weird. Why well, is weird when John Cena's not there? Because he's. The, it's like the show doesn't have an obvious focus. Which isn't a bad thing. And I like to disagree with the nothing happens on the show. Because I think a lot happens. Um, a lot a lot happened. <laughs> but oh, it's not, oh, a lot no, happened. Not, but, it's not, but nothing it's not stuff happened. You're gonna, it's not stuff you're going to remember like three months down the line. Or like six months down the line. You know, it's not like the stuff that sticks out. It's not horrible stuff but it's, it's not that everything's gonna be hulk hogan or uh stone cold coming to the ring in a beer truck you know but it feels like does it feel like we're having less and less of those moments well like you, you can't you, uh yeah because we don't have stone cold with beer trucks well um, i'm not just saying no i'm not saying we don't have limos blowing up we don't have uh uh I don't know. We we have moments. I, did it entertain you? Entertain you for the night? Yeah, is what I'm concerned with. Like we we just bitched about TNA doing something over the top all the time, mm-hmm. and now we're saying that WWE doesn't do that, and that's why it's not doesn't I look think, good. I think that well, I think there's a middle ground somewhere well, in between there. You know, they don't need to be, like, dumping people in porta-potties and fucking, you know, stabbing people with spiked two-by-fours. No. But, uh-huh. like... Or go ahead. Janus. But yeah, I like spiked two-by-fours. <laughs> and not just in the bedroom. <laughs> what? The hell? what? What? You don't know what Lunchbox likes. Uh, he's not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong. <laughs> wow! Wow! Okay. Uh, anyways, where were we with this? Before Lunchbox we does went like off? spiked two by fours in the bedroom. I'm just throwing it out there. Um. So raw last night. Uh, <laughs> it was very. Yeah. You know, but notice, like CM Punk has kind of become the John Cena position in the fact that he's like at least on there once an hour in a significant portion. Oh yeah. Which I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. And, and, and I do notice, like, after we had the week where, like, uh, what Mick Foley said, why aren't you, why do you need Paul Heyman? You don't need a guy on the mic. You're good at the mic. And now we just see more and more punk on the mic. Uh, but, no, it's all great. And we've, what, this is what we've been wanting is more punk, you know, down the line. And now we got punk wrestling, like, you know, Daniel Bryan again, again in this tag match. But still, you know, uh, I I love that we can have another run of this with, like, maybe Punk Hill, maybe Daniel Bryan will come down the line and uh, and have a series with them. Maybe that'll be a filler from, like, Survivor Series to December uh, uh, before we get to the Rock thing, you know, if he's the one that's going to do that, you know. That's true. So I, I think the, the only the, the only thing with the CM Punk thing, did anyone find last night's segment, like, super awkward? Why? It went like, un- like it went uncomfortably long. awkward, like him and JR? Like I get, I get they like to trash. Let's JR. say that is not the most awkward thing they've done with Jr. No, I get they. Thing. No, I get that. I was there live when Linda McMahon kicks him in the nuts and they do like a dance over him. You know, he like was I was burned there alive. <laughs> but yes. they burned Jr. alive. No, with and Mountain I get Dew. that. I get that. But like, it went on for like twenty minutes, and it wasn't like CM Punk saying, "I don't like you because you say sir." It was just like him. Like just calling him names and like, like just getting in his face. Like it was like really right, like uncomfortable. Right. Is that more Chris. uncomfortable than the time we had Big Show crying in the ring for ten minutes here in Pittsburgh? Oh no, that was no, that was uncomfortable. That too. was that was very uncomfortable. There's a lot of I mean, I we mean, let's let's just think. You know, a few short months ago, anything with John Laurinaitis was yeah. uncomfortable. No, so. what? What? Chris John Laurinaitis was amazing upset because. Dad get mommy in the ring, and he 
It literally felt like Daddy hit mommy. Like it, <laughs> it did. <laughs> I like how that's you just scream that's that good. in that's, your dorm room. That's the kind of thing that they're going for. They want you to think, "Oh, this guy's a dick." I'm they're just trying to really evoke. Uncomfortable, and I don't like to it. Hey, someone emotion. would make him stop. Guess, guess where they did that, by the way? Hmm. In Oklahoma City. Well, yeah, but like, of everybody is he, that is loves the emotion, Is the emotion they want me to evoke, like to be really sad and to like cry in a corner? Because that's what I like. Like that was it was like you're supposed to be angry. It's an emotion. I, well, I wasn't Go, angry. Get was sad, like, cry in a corner, and buy a fucking t-shirt. Jeez. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't angry. I was just like, can we bring up the fact? Wait, isn't like the, Go ahead, Josh. Isn't Jr. part of the Kiss My Ass Club? Yes, he is. Yep. Um, yeah, that's the most uncomfortable thing you can have someone do in the ring. No, but no, no, that was uncomfortable, too. But, like, you know, it's just, like, re- like I don't know. It it felt, like, really awkward. the Because enti- it went on for, like, so long. And, like, it was, it was I, I forgot where, like, someone said, someone said it was, like, a guy, like, yelling at his dog and trying to get him rub, rub his nose in the spot that he peed in. Like, it was just... <laughs> what are you talking about? I, it, it, it was awkward. Bottom line, awkward. I didn't feel like it was awkward at all. I think, I mean, it, I think it was, we just uncovered it, some deep seated issues that WrestleFan has, apparently. It was, <laughs> it was CM Punk who has been a face trying to, so hard to become a bona fide heel, mm-hmm. and he's succeeding. Mm hmm. He's one of the few people who do that and do it perfectly. Mm. And I, being a you know, dick yeah. is his calling card. You know what? I, I think we need to sell I don't. I don't I think, think it I, is. Whoops. I I, I, okay. I, the, I get the whole heel thing. I don't think Punk as a heel needs to be a dick. But he's because, not acting. No, he's not. Go do, you, on, but do you follow him yeah. on Twitter? No, he's a dick. No, he acts like a dick on Twitter. I know. No, he but- is a dick. He- Go watch the interview Dalton Castle did with him and uh, Paul Heyman. No, I he watched flat- it. Yeah. He flat out says that that's how he is. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. not I- acting. He's an asshole. Yeah, he- he's- I think he's even gone on like with Call Cabana. He's like, yeah, I'm not like great with a lot of the fans. You know, I'm nice to them and stuff. But you know, but if you catch me during time, no, I'm not gonna be pleasant to you. That's yeah. who I well, am. You know, that's that's so. true. But compare it to like when he was heel during the sh- during the Straight Edge Society thing. Okay, it was he was more intellectual about it, <laughs> and he was more like. And about he pulled point. different hold on, hold on, strings. Hold on, hold on. Go it ahead. Was more, it was more about him getting points across. Uh-huh. Like this is more like, like back when Triple H was a like a big heel, and like he was just being brutal to people and just like yelling at them, and like it's not that's not the CM Punk that is necessarily needs to be a heel. He just needs to be sort of like he, he when he was talking about like Jerry Lawler and he was bringing up points like how he was the minister of propaganda. Mm-hmm. Like that was still him being CM Punk. Mm-hmm. He was being a dick, but he was still being CM Punk. Now he's just kind of being mean for the sense of being mean. Um, Cause he's a heel. <laughs> Because he's a heel. Because he got I, tired. I, I guess that eliminates all argument. I, 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 I guess he got tired of uh, uh, guys like WrestleFan complaining that he wasn't really being a heel because he has a good point. <sighs> so maybe you should still be cheering for him. He is. So a he had to crank it hard into that direction. <laughs> so he has to almost kick a puppy. Yes. Yes. And you know what? Kick a puppy. In fact, as you heal. Oh, okay, apparently Riz. Apparently Riz. He doesn't mind people kicking puppies. No, no. As long he as the puppy's in, in on it, as long as the, the puppy's ring. in on it, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. The puppy. As long as the, the puppy's in on it. It's like Snitsky and the baby. Just put but it's the a fake baby. The baby. It wasn't a real baby. The baby was okay with it. Yes. Because it was a. Plastic there was a signed ball. agreement with the baby, and he was okay with it. It was like me getting kicked in the nuts. I agreed to it. Actually, no, no, no. It was going to happen either way. <laughs> well, I, I, I just, I think that should be stated. That well, was, that was going to happen. Fuck you, all right? I, there, <laughs> there wasn't really much choice. Of, if you said no, I'd be like, no, I'm not. No, I'm telling you, it's coming. So, <laughs> well, then fuck you. And apparently, John Fun says I'm a heel. Good job. Because I kick puppies and babies. I used to be the show heel. 
Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> No Russell Which, fans. Where did that go? I well, uh, no, 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 Let's talk about a real heel. Um, Sean Devari, uh, mm-hmm. it's friend of the show. Drink, Sean Devari. Uh, what happened with Sean Devari here, guys? Well, the How many more times is, are you going to say he his name? Choked out somebody on a bus. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. no. He, it was on a train. <laughs> he choked out somebody on a train. It's a story he probably made up. <laughs> Probably. Maybe. Because, well, he, apparently he was on a train from somewhere to somewhere, and some dude was like, did he, did he say like he had a gun or something? Or like he was like oh, causing a scene, or I don't, I don't know what. But he eventually chokes the guy out so he can. <laughs> <laughs> from the article from TMZ.com via re- eWrestlingNews.com, former WWE, blah, 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 he used a rear naked show call to save a train full of people last week after an unruly passenger allegedly threatened to kill them. Uh, Defari says the incident went down last Thursday at an airport bound train from Minneapolis. The W star, uh, it should be the former W star, says that an uncontrollable passenger in his car became violent, shouted racial slurs, and threatened to kill his fellow passengers. Davari says multiple people pressed the emergency button for help, but nothing happened. There was a, dun, 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 dun. TMZ. Hey. The pro wrestler then took matters in his own hands, telling TMZ, I quote, I wasn't going to wait any longer to see if a cop showed up. Davari says he threw the guy down, slapped on a rear naked choke hold on him then threw his ass out at the next stop i'm sure he didn't wait for the train to stop moving no ticket nope. uh, no and after <laughs> afterwards he turned to the rest of the uh rest of the train and said no ticket, no ticket. <laughs> one witness who was on the train when it all went down tells us davari choked out the passenger so hard <laughs> He, he peed out, his pants. Choked out him. He choked him out <laughs> so <laughs> hard. So the, hard. A rep for the Metro Transit Rail tells TMZ Metro Transit police responded after being alerted by the train operator to a fight on board. The investigation is ongoing. <laughs> the the uh the what the Metro Transit ref came in and counted yes. him out. Oh, <laughs> he did the arm check. He did the arm check. <laughs> I, may, I may be going over the line here, but is it odd that someone who is do or who is and was doing a character on TV where he's the you know uh, uh, Indian guy and he, you know he was a heel because he was an Indian guy uh, subdue someone making a scene on a public transit? <laughs> you went too far. Yeah, I did. Maybe but, if they then arrested him yeah. after the fact. <laughs> Then, you get over here! Oh, wait! Then it just turned into... I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no ticket. Yes, exactly. Um, That's what I said. Friend of the Russell show, we should... We, 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 drink. We, what's that? I mean, from Texas. What's that, sir? I said Russell Finn can make those jokes. He's racist. I mean, from Texas. Inherently, yes. Yep. Exactly. Uh, also, other good news for a friend of the show, Sarah Del Rey... Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's she just took up a position in WWE developmental. Uh, uh, got reported to uh, NXT facilities after finalizing the deal. Here he is, here she is in a town with Tampa, Florida. There you Friday go, with Norman Smiley. Yeah. NXT clinic. Unofficial Hi. friend of the show. Mascot. Unofficial mascot. Norman Smiley. There and you bald go. Joey Mercury. Tremendous. Is that Joey Mercury? Holy shit! It is Joey Mercury. Tremendous. There's another one with her down below too. Two. Oh, this is apparently on Bill Demott's uh, tout tout account. So go check that out. Good, good for Sarah Del Rey. Uh, there was some discussion on this. So, so do you think this is something that's gonna be a major help for uh, the Divas division? I think they get more. Yeah, I think it can, and it, it in a way it will, and in a way it won't. Because obviously, if they're bringing in Sarah Del Rey to be a trainer, they want they want her to train the girls that aren't necessarily as well trained. Oh, just I think in general she's a trainer. That's fine. I mean, yeah, I, well, yeah, but I mean, like, and, and they don't good because we've talked before about how you know in FCW or in NXT, which is now what being called, that they the big thing is they take a lot of wrestlers that are experienced and have you know frequented the indie scene but they have to train them to the wwe style mm-hmm. sarah del rey doesn't know that style 
So her, I think her main goal is to be teaching the girls that are going to be coming for the modeling, modeling scene and from, you know, all yeah. that stuff, how to, you know, wrestle without getting hurt. Uh, you, you, you're watching a bit more NXT there, wrestle fan, than the rest of us. Does it seem like the girls coming in there are more indie girls? They have been bringing in a lot of actual wrestling talent. Now, because I, I want to connect that with this other story, because there's a lot of news this week from Kelly Kelly leaving. Um, and, mm. and, and the one article you posted, actually, the one about the, you know, it's not okay to take her on for her sexual promiscuity or something like that. They make fun of her because she's a horrible wrestler, not because she, you exactly. know, slept around. Let's have, because she's make, a whore. Yeah, they make yeah. fun of her because she's a horrible wrestler, not because she's a whore. Exactly. Um, so, but, like, there's a good comment in there about she was, like, one of the classic examples from the... Uh, Laurenitis era of getting picking up girls from the modeling agencies instead of from the wrestling scene. It really feels like the more girls we see coming in, you know, we have our Natalias and well, Beth Phoenix was from a bit ago, of course. Um, I, I you know, uh, the Caitlins, the AJ Lees, you know, um, I, like those are girls that were wrestling before they got into anything else. Those, know? those are girls that the way I like to define it, those are girls that would have never gotten into wrestling if it wasn't presented to them. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yo. Yeah, versus, and, and you're kind. Of, I think you're kind of seeing like, uh, like you know, uh, Cameron from Tough Enough. That was obviously not somebody that was there to be a wrestler. Uh, getting stuck in something like the Funkosaurus thing. I right. don't think she's going to be a wrestler. You know. Oh, same with I, Oksana. I, well, is is Oksana really along that? Well, I guess she is. Well, really. I mean, in the fact that she's managing you know, or was managing Antonio Cesaro, yeah. she was wrestling every once in a while, but you know. Yeah, yeah. So and and, and so I, I think this is great. I think it kind of shows a dedication to that idea of let's get women wrestlers, not women, and maybe they can wrestle. And I right. think they, so. I mean, with, it's, it's really a women first before wrestling, and when it should be a women wrestlers first. Yeah, and, and I think with Sarah Del Rey coming into WWE, that's going to help promote other women wrestlers to come to WWE it's, to get oh, yeah, that training yeah. with her I, and, or, you know, get some of Sarah, Sarah Delray's girls over to WWE as well. Yeah. We, and, and that's, and we have seen a good, like more initiative of more wrestlers wanting to audition and wanting to come in Uh page in FCW, who was Brittany Knight in the England circuit and comes from a wrestling family, like a legitimate, like, Third generation wrestling family in England. Uh, you have you have Tennille, who's from the uh, Australia area. Uh, you have, uh, I believe, uh, Buggy Nova, who isn't there anymore. She actually checked into uh, uh, WWE's rehabilitation uh, sort of deal, uh, but she was from the California area. Um, I'm sorry. That was fast. Yeah, <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> but but uh, uh, yeah, that's, drugs, and that's though, all. Isn't it for an eating disorder? I, I, I didn't know what it was for, but I, I just heard the news about it. It was paired with the whole Raquel Diaz leaving uh, stuff. Um, but it, you're seeing a more initiative of them bringing in actual wrestlers. And that's the sort of thing. People also have sort of a misconception that you have to sacrifice beauty for wrestling when it comes to getting women. There are tons of beautiful women on the independents, especially the ones that WWE is hiring now, mm -hmm. but they're wrestlers. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they went to, they had it in their mind. I'm going to go to a wrestling school and I'm going to try to make a career out of being a wrestler. Uh, case in point, I, I will, I will say that so we had, we had, we had a women's match this past weekend. That was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. questionable. Okay. So this is still even Five happening stars. on the Indies. Uh, I think I think the whole thing's getting sent to Bosch Mania. I, I gotta be honest. Uh, <laughs> I uh, it looks like the, the first time I'm seeing this one girl. I'm not gonna Ooh. you can figure it out, okay? And it really just looked like what the fuck is going on here? I've seen people in training school, mid training school, look better than this. Um, so it really kind of fell flat. Um, I felt bad for her it. Really, it really, yeah, yeah. And as somebody that doesn't get a lot of ring time there in that in that group, and I really felt bad for the other person on it. Uh, and somebody that needs experience, you know, on the other end, too. Yeah. This one, I, I was really kind of shocked at this one. But but when you go to her table, she has pictures, da-da-da-da-da. She really think. I mean, I don't know anything about her. I'm sure she's nice, whatever. But you, you kind of see the focus was on the pictures and not the wrestling. You know what I mean? And as much as you make... Go ahead. Go ahead, Riz. 
Would she make gut check? Fuck no. Not okay. even, ch- uh, not even no, gut okay. check. Not even gut check. Oh, and that's- oh, so she'll probably get two out of three. Or <laughs> one out of three. Uh, yeah. Uh, as much as much as I love like Caitlyn and Layla and like girls like that, even though the, the you know they still would never have been wrestlers if it wasn't presented to them. Okay, you know if they if they weren't given this platform, if they weren't you know able to go straight to WWE, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. they wouldn't they wouldn't have gotten into wrestling. They would have done modeling or dancing or bodybuilding or whatever it was. You know, yeah. Why why is re- why, this has got to be the hardest way to make your thing you know and and, and it just seems <laughs> like I, I, I wrestling you need to have a passion for in order to be good at it to get anywhere with it uh, really i mean and that and don't unless get you get wrong. hired by the wwe i guess but don't, don't get me wrong that doesn't I mean, always just go for females that goes for some males too that does that does but it just i I just can't like, you, fathom that that this is like the hardest thing unless you got like a half ass trainer that didn't make you, you know, you know, bump, you know, 1200 times in your first session, you know, to make sure you don't break your neck doing it. Uh, I mean, there's there's a reason I'm behind a camera. OK, I, I just can't fathom like these these girls saying this is how I'm going to do my modeling career by breaking my ass every night. You know, mm-hmm. I, I and I just I just can't wrap my head around that. So boobs. Uh, there you go, and that is the answer to all our problems. Let's 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 talk about the other answer to all of our problems, uh, and the next T-shirt I'm going to buy from WWE Shop. Hugging is all the rage. <laughs> it's a goat-faced uh, Daniel Bryan kind of chibi thing going on, and uh, a kind of teddy bear cane. Oh my god, it's furry. They're furries. What are you doing over here? What 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 what's what are you doing? What you, oh no! Oh, 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 oh. oh, get out! Oh, yes. get out! You didn't hug me back. I I didn't know what to do. I went your hand. You like what kind do you of mean you, didn't you know kind what of to like do. you kind of like you did trap his arm. You you, you, you didn't hug me back. Hug trapped me, man. Firm and then, and and then we have our matching yellow shirts. We did not plan this, by the way. Um, <laughs> by the way, hey, please, please, more wrestling groups. Get T-shirts of your shows. These these went like hotcakes and it was definitely it was not a weird color or anything like that that i wanted to get you know very bright though i'm definitely going to be good when i'm going jogging at night or something but um yeah also sign note <laughs> on that t-shirt is anyone find it weird that daniel bryan is wearing a diaper <laughs> <laughs> I guess, no pants i guess i guess so wait wait oh you can zoom into it there he is there you go he, he, he wears white and, tights. and it that looks makes filled sense. And it lo- but, it's, oh, but he wow. doesn't wear white tights it looks filled. Uh, wow, I, I I think that's. I, I don't know because it's. Come I on. guess it's a chibi re- or chibi cartoon. Or I I don't know. Chibi if dick. Or I don't know. Well, that's that shows how much I don't know about it. Like, are they <laughs> supposed to be all babies or what? Pretty much, and they're animal eyes and everything like that. So what? what it? Chibi. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, I want to throw this out there. Uh, there was a really good question that was tossed out there by Papa Lunchbox. Hey. Hey. He said, worst matches from Fantastic Wrestlers. So it was a great thread going on. Uh, I just want to toss a few of these out. Uh, first, uh, uh, Mr. Alexander Kars. Uh, Sting versus Jeff Hardy, Victory Road 2011. <laughs> yes. Um, Bobby Snyder. Which one of those is the spectacular wrestler, though? <laughs> oh. Sting was good for his time. Bobby Snyder, uh, Alicia Fox versus Molina. Wait, nothing was wrong with that match. Um, <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. What else we got? In? Oh, then just people started yelling at each other. Here you go. Uh, Mad Bike says, uh, Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan. There you yeah. go. Kurt Angie. For- I have to, you know, I want to disagree with that publicly okay. here. Okay. That was a, that was a fine match. Not because Hulk Hogan did anything, but Shawn Michaels sold like he was getting hit in the face with Thor's hammer. <laughs> <laughs> that was the problem was with a- that match. It no, that was the exact problem with it, though. It was excellent, and that's why it was over the top. Well, it, and was, it was it was it was hilarious. Was it was entertaining. It was hilarious and entertaining. It wasn't a good match. <laughs> yeah, well, entertaining yeah. counts. Chris, no, no, go ahead. All right, uh, this is an, another one I appreciate. Kurt hanging well, Mister Perfect versus Lex Luger at uh, uh, WrestleMania Nine. Dear God, says uh, Charmin. 
Um, I had DX versus Orton and Edge at New Year's Re- Revolution. Oh, that was so bad. Mm. Mm. Mainly because that was the one also, with Triple H. Also, Brett versus Vince for Mania. That was horrible. Horrible. Was very strange. Um, yeah. One that wasn't said, and I was surprised because, well, one or because both one of them at least had some goodness in him mm-hmm. was uh, Brock and uh, Goldberg. Yeah. The first worst yeah. match in WWE history. Here's yes. another good one here from Tony Tony Garza. Jay Lethal versus Sanjay Dutt. Sounds awesome. Tuxedo match. <laughs> and, and, no, and no, no, no. Pa- Tuxedo chain match. Oh, was that risk? Papa Lunchbox did get it right. Hmm. Pat Patterson and Gerald Briscoe, King of the Ring 2000. Evening gown match. The, evening, the hardcore evening gown match. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That match was a wrestling match. clinic. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Shut up, wrestle fan. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other news and such you guys want to throw out there before we get out of here today? Uh, follow up on Kelly Kelly, if I may. Okay. She she is – her uh, promoter is – a dick. <laughs> um, he's trying to sell the idea of having her do indie promotions mm-hmm. for ten thousand dollars. Damn! There now, better be a lap dance and a blowjob for that much. Honestly, for honestly though, everyone, for honestly, everybody though, who buys please, a go ticket, ahead, yes, for everybody who buys a ticket, they will get a blowjob. That's that's the only we- reason you pay to see Kelly Kelly. But honest, or honestly, at least though, touch a boob. Honestly, though, touch it's a, it's, she it's a horrible. Boob. It's a it's wrong completely. Mm. But it's not surprising necessarily. Like we hear these reports a lot, and this goes back to the problem when you hire models and not wrestlers because they don't understand how indie wrestling works. And. It, it, no one's gonna, you know. At least the people that know what they're doing are not gonna pay that. Someone, honestly, someone out there would pay that much, mm-hmm. but it would be for a one-time appearance. And that's and that's the thing. People, it it proves Kelly Kelly doesn't want a future in wrestling. She wants to make a payday off of her being released, but that's it. She's not thinking long term, as far as you know, getting bookies for independents go. You know, she's gonna have. She's th- Whatever career where she's going to be in maximum every six months or and all that and make those rounds, you know, you know, do the, you know, like you see all these girls. She's going to marry George Clooney. She's going to marry George Clooney. Is no, that, George is Clooney is much more class than at least Stacey Keeley. Uh, Stacey Keeley Blair is like sort of classy. Clooney-Lieber? She's classy. Come on. George, George Clooney Don't is you a say baseball a... bat dick that he doesn't know what to do with. <laughs> 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 wow. But yeah, ten ten thousand dollars? No, 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 no. Wow. Uh, all right, Kelly, Kelly, welcome to the escort business. Um, <laughs> hey, we're not supposed to talk about her being a whore. Oh, what? No, I just <laughs> say I'm just saying job prospects. Um, oh, okay, you know, that's fine then. All about the money. There you go. Um, let's see. It's because big names that, that don't have that any interest in get booked in indies unless people are willing to pay. Um, yeah, that's basically it. We'll see how this is in six months when she doesn't get any bookings. How, <laughs> much, how much do you think Hogan's getting? Well, you know, you know, something like you know Hulk Hogan, like the thing that uh, Mad Mike was complaining about up in that Poughkeepsie show, where it was like seventy dollars for you to go. You were required. You had to go pay to see Hogan. I mean, Hogan's get a cut off that. He's not getting. I I don't think he's getting a straight flat <laughs> fee. While well, he's getting that, of, of course, as well. Uh, but then he's probably getting a cut off of all those tickets for people to get autographs. So, right. And, and that is, and that's bad. And that, but in a way I get that a bit more because it's Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. Like it's Hulk Hogan who no matter what he's done recently is Mr. Professional wrestling. Exactly. Exactly. You know, Kelly, Kelly, not really. Yeah. And, and I, and the, the, the prices I've heard, like, and I don't know too much about, but the prices I hear for, like, legends and bigger names, like, it's still only, it's not that. It's, like, maybe maybe the worst I've heard is a quarter of that. Really. Yeah. Uh, we, we heard these same reports when Melina first got released. Yeah. That her yeah. prices were ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, <laughs> then she was hanging. Not if you're Batista. 
<laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, yeah, and then now she's hanging out at the East Steel City Con snubbing Bobby F. J. Town. Yep. So how did that go? So Bobby F. J. Town. Uh, oh, poor, poor, poor Bobby. Bobby. Poor Bobby. Fuck you, Melina. Stop. Don't stub Bobby F. J. Town. Nobody fucks with Bobby F. J. Town. No, nope. you just got the Miami Nation against you. That's Nobody. Uh, by the way, Steel uh, side note, Steel City Con uh, coming up in December. Uh, so we'll be there in the Sorgatron Media booth again. Uh, so will Sergeant Slaughter. And so will Sergeant Slaughter, half of the A-team. Not the good half. Um, but Dirk Diggler, that was also in Body Slam. Uh, let's see, Chewbacca's going to be there. Um, I'm going to pull it up. I'm, I'm excited about this one. <laughs> Virgil is Virgil. Virgil's going to be there probably, Virgil's, Virgil's run, probably roaming around, there. talking to hey, the score. Yeah, Space yeah. Bet. What's the score? What's the score? What's the score? Um, okay. Uh, what did somebody hey, say that he was score? down in Cal- didn't didn't Wheels get stuck with him uh, down in California lately? Wheels, what's the score? <laughs> uh, I I know he was uh, at Little Italy Days this weekend. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because oh, yeah. they were like, oh, there are two wrestlers here, and um, and we're like, what? Like Bruno San Martino and Dominic Danucci, right? They're always there, right? Because it's Bloomfield, you know. <laughs> they uh, fucking live there. They fuck- yeah, it's fucking their neighborhood, right? It's like not Virgil. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Well, uh, I don't one think of my, Virgil's a little bit Italian. Yeah, Could be wrong. Angle. One know. of the people I follow on Twitter said that uh, <laughs> there's two. There was two wrestlers at Little Italy days, mm-hmm. and then uh, he revealed in the next one, in the next tweet, that it, one of them was Virgil, and he might be sleeping on his couch. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, I told him that he needed to have Virgil set up the table in his living room. How is it? How is it? Just and to I, take pictures. And I was worried that he was confused that he thought there were two wrestlers there because he had the banner up with DiBiase. <laughs> so um, th- there's that. Uh, you know, how is it that we're like literally in a city, uh, uh, you know, not to put over Pittsburgh overall, but we're literally in a city where we can trip over a pro wrestler. <laughs> and in, in that one case, we could probably very literally trip over him. Um, this, <laughs> I, I just think that's fantastic to me. And not only like just like, oh, a bunch of job or indie guys, whatever. Um, we have Bruno San Martino. We have Bruno fucking San Martino. We Two. have fucking Kurt Angle, you know, um, that you might just run into it at the grocery store. You know, we I, have, I, I we, but we have we have like Shawn Michaels, which like that doesn't, you know, like he lives on his ranch and like, yeah, know. yeah. Does Shawn Michaels really come out of the compound? I don't think he exists on anywhere other than a WWE ring in his compound. Like, he, he doesn't materialize. I mean, you know, at least Kurt Angle was out at the strip club looking for his new wife. Uh, all right, let's see. Uh, let's uh, move on here. Um, uh, what did you learn from this week, Mr. Riz? Starting with me? Yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pass. why you said your name. Pass. Pass? Pass? I learned Pass? that uh, if you look like a porn star... Chances are, when you get into the ring, you're going to act like one. You'll blow. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's just connect into the dots. <laughs> All right. How about you, Wrestle fan? Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that the Ryback uh, learned that he can actually pin wrestlers with more than just his Samoan drop move. That's <laughs> <laughs> good. And it was on instinct. Because there was no other way to do it, but he learned how to actually pin people. They with were talking moves. about that. How about how he killed Tensai? <laughs> oh, he, he did not him look, so hard. I don't know if he just said, great, they, they, they said that he pulled out another move from his arsenal. Which was like a clothesline. Even they line. were confused as to what happened. I, isn't Tensai's move a clothesline? No, that's like the cloth. Oh, it's that, no, it's that... that Something. Okay. No, 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 no. He missed. No, no. That's your mug. No, he does. He does the claw. Like, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. yeah he, no, he missed it's his like hand. Claw and he theme claws or him. something like that. So, anyways, I found one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I I learned that every time they have a Jr. Appreciation Day or night or week or month, nothing goes right for Jr. Mm. <laughs> nothing. He, his hat. Poor hat. It looks like he was holding it after they came like, back. He was like coddling it, like it was some kind of like, like oh, baby. Like, oh, my mother gave me this hat. <laughs> it just—he looks so sad. 
Oh, anyway, Wrestling Revolution says uh, uh, Jr. can't uh, actually smile, so he's a great option to make fun of. Well, there you go. Oh. oh, I'm having such a great night here. Why aren't you smiling about it? Okay, yeah, I got you. I got you. Oh, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking, well, I'm not saying no, no. It's like actually kind of legit. Why you gotta so, you make know, fun of him? I'm not like making that. fun of him. I'm just kind of stating, you know. Uh, DJ, uh, pop a lunchbox. Say something worse than that, so I can get out of this hole. Something Dude. worse than that. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's pressure, but you came to the right man. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god, I totally blanked. What was it? <laughs> oh shit! You can pass. And why is it getting no, foggy? In, in the, why is it getting why? foggy in there? Uh, no comment. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I learned that if uh, if Sheamus gets to wrestle somebody besides Alberto Del Rio, uh, he can have a pretty good match. Yeah. There you go. There you go. That's cool. Uh, I learned that uh, Jr. just won't let go of that mirror, mirror goatee. Mm-hmm. Um, that's all. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. From the chat room, <laughs> Big PPC. Learn that this week in wrestling, that Tensai is heavier than he looks. And Brodus Clay, I'm sorry, Brodus doesn't always win, and uh, Mexicans <laughs> always win, except when it's for titles. Wow. Uh, Bobby of J-Town learned that Ryback enjoys the occasional hamburger and that tiny planes don't belong in children's rooms and that Santino can pick up the win via tickle. That would be uh, the that, Saturday that Apparently Saturday. that happened on Saturday morning slam. Yes, I need to watch Saturday morning slam. Even if morning you slam. sleep in on Saturday mornings, go check the Mayhem account for the Saturday slam tweets that happened between the 10 to 1030. Uh, Bobby F. J-Town, I've been popping in there whenever I can. Uh, but Bobby F. J-Town has been fucking owning that one. Uh, it, it's I, I'm, like, actually, I'm actually interested to watch this week's Saturday morning slam mm-hmm. because apparently uh, Daniel Bryan and Tyson Kidd wrestle. And from what I read... They they did a great job of appealing to the kids without like having a horrible match, mm. you know, like, without being like a uh, how Santino does it, you know what I mean? Yeah, like or you know a Zack Ryder or whatever. Like apparently they did a really good job of being kid friendly. Uh, so I'm really interested to see that. I'm hope maybe I'll watch Saturday Morning Slam this week. No, you won't. I, <laughs> no, I also learned uh, I don't think people can pick up that answer Dan's from a different country. There was an attempt at a USA chant that didn't really go over well. So, just saying. Yeah. Also, why do you, also why do fans chant USA during the Antonio Cesaro Brodus Clay match when apparently Brodus Clay is from another planet? Good point. Good he point. is the planet. He's, he's not from another planet. He is the planet <laughs> Funkasaurus. <laughs> yeah. He's in captivity, which just sounds wrong. All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. Hey, it, you know, check us out. Like I said, I mentioned the Saturday sl- uh, morning slam thing, but the guys have been doing a tremendous job uh, on, on Thursday Impact and SmackDown. If you're watching those live, please pull up Twitter. Check out what the Mayhem guys are talking about uh, between Bobby and Riz, and I think Russell Fan pops in there. I, I do impact, uh, so do please impacts. join me for that. Because, please join me for that because I get so sad. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, I Mad Mike, I think's popped in there in the past. That's usually when it's all caps on Thursday nights. Um, I am sure. I, I I know I can't do it this week, but I'm hoping if I'm home Wednesdays, I can do uh, a main event on Ion. Uh, so we're going to see what we can do with all that stuff. Uh, I, you guys have been doing a great job with it, and I love seeing. Uh, uh, everybody's interacting with us. I, I've seen a few new followers pop up because of it. New names, new faces, uh, drop it back and forth. So please follow at Mayhem Show on Twitter. You're welcome, Sword. Yes, fantastic job, guys. Uh, and everybody else. And everybody else. Um, Yes, Bobby Risen, Risen Bobby do Fridays, and then I have some. We set up. I have some automatics set up, and I love that you, I like popped in the hangout while I was at my football gig, and you guys were like, "Yeah, we all just tweeted at the same time." Yeah. Um, so I mean, that's that'll happen, you know. I mean, there are a few of us on there, so you know, uh, and hopefully get some new faces on it. Uh, thanks uh, again, John Fun. Go check us out on Spreaker.com. I think the site is. We're also on iTunes, Blip TV, Stitcher, Roku uh, on the Blip TV app, and YouTube as well. So anywhere, just look up Wrestling Mayhem Show on whatever service, and uh, we've been popping up a lot. If we're not there, 
If we're not on the service that you are the patron of, one, how did you find this? Second of all, uh, go and email us and let us know, and we'll we'll try to get on there at uh, that email address. Good, good, times. good times. Good times at times. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Also, drop a line to 412-206-WMS0-9670. Uh, please join us every Tuesday, live.sorgatronmedia.com. You can join us in the chat room where these guys are always bumping all night long. Thanks to uh, Wheels. Uh, Bobby of J Town Wrestling Revolution. Matt Carlins was in earlier. Uh, Big PPC and everybody else that joins us throughout the night. We usually thin since we go so damn. By late. the app. By the app. Wrestling Man Show Gold. Check it out. Riz has got it up right there. All the access. Support you can the show. Email. Visit the website. Tweet about the show. Am- email the show. Amazon App Store on Amazon. Um, Troubleshoot. And there you go. Um, uh, settings. <laughs> Tell a friend. Settings. Tell, exactly. Exactly. Uh, thanks. All the episodes. We got a little dance from uh, Chachi. Oh my god. Oh yeah. To head out. Thanks, Riz DJ Lunchbox. I'm that dick. Wrestle fan and the chat room. See you next week. Uh, Mayhem show out. Jack Swagger of Mars, Chapter 1, by Brandon Stroud. All-American, American, American, American Jack Swagger awoke from hypersleep to find the USS Ranthadness motionless, dark, and eerily silent. Silent. Hello? Jack bellowed, stepping out of his chamber with his arms held out to his sides, fingers spread wide, taking big stomps across the starship's cold metal floor. Is anybody out there? Swagger fumbled his thick taped fingers across the control board, looking for the vessel's auxiliary power switch. Perhaps he could burn light into this empty space. He'd open his eyes and find himself backstage at the Bell Center again, removed from this nightmare exile looking upward and slightly to the right as Vicky Guerrero, a boy long gone from his life, muttered explanations of a United States championship match under her breath and cackled. In his mind, Jack wiped his hands over his face and jogged in place. Tonight will be the night, he imagines himself saying. I'm going to defeat Santino Morella or whoever and win back the United States championship. A belt that belongs to the all-American, American, American. The voice in his head drifted away as his fingers laced their way through the control prongs of the ship's antiquated control mechanisms. With images of a cheering crowd and the Jack Swagger soaring eagle flashing through his brain, he pushed the stick forward, bringing up the damn mantis bridge lights. The fluorescent lights suddenly illuminated the room, popping with a loud fizz, blinding Jack as if he were opening his eyes on a bright new morning. Swagger moved his arm away from his eyes, and, as his sight adjusted, he found himself far, far away from the smart, sexy, and powerful world of WWE superstars. He was alone. Alone on the USS Radadmanthus, lost in God knows where. Light switch then lurched forward, sending Swagger stumbling forward into the ship's middle turnbuckle. Jack collapsed onto the ground, waiting for the hyper tube or whatever to tip over and pin him so he could end today's 30 seconds of work. He could his face. How long could this losing streak last? That's when he noticed something peculiar. The ship wasn't moving. After staring up at the lights for several minutes, Jack sprang to his feet. Frankenstein walked to the nearest shuttle window, expecting to find himself lost in a distant starfield. The engines have stopped. I'm dead, he thought. Maybe the hypersleep chamber malfunctioned. Am I out of gas? How long have I been out? Fear overcame him when he made it to a window. And after taking a moment to wipe the glass because his weird mouth breathing had fogged it up, Jack's eyes bugged out. The ship wasn't lost in space at all. It had landed. Jack shook his head and wiped his face with his hands. 
This was the most surprising thing to happen to him since losing to Evan Bourne five or six dozen times in a row. The Radantantamus had crashed in a great sea of pink sand. Marth, he whispered. <laughs>